Hi, it's time for another Squint 180. We're a little overdue, and I'll try to get through this as quickly as I can. Um, this is uh, out of Malachi. Um, chapter 2 was what I was reading. This is probably a better word in February around Valentine's Day because I want to talk about relationships. But it was in my reading, and I thought I'd share it for you guys today. Malachi chapter 2. God is speaking to Israel, and he's letting uh, Judah... The men of Judah and Israel know um, some of the things that they have erred on. And he says, beginning in verse 13, here's another thing you do. You cover the Lord's altar with tears, weeping and groaning because he pays no attention to your offerings and doesn't accept them with pleasure. You cry out, why doesn't the Lord accept my worship? And I'll tell you why. Because the Lord witnessed the vows you, you and your wife made when you were young, but you've been unfaithful to her, though she remained your faithful partner the wife of your marriage vows. Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife, and body and spirit you are his? And what does he want? Godly children from your union. So guard your heart, remain loyal to your, the wife of your youth. For I hate divorce, says the Lord, the God of Israel. To divorce your wife is to overwhelm her with cruelty, says the Lord of heaven's armies. So guard your heart, do not be unfaithful to your wife. So the idea here is... It's, um, and it's not mentioned, but you can see it. The idea is the Hebrew word berit, and it uh, means covenant. And it's talking about covenant. And covenant is where God enters into a covenant, an agreement, a little bit more than a contract that we might think. When God enters into something that's very unconditional, um, whether or not we hold up our end of the bargain, God is always faithful, and God always comes through. I think of in the book of Genesis... Um, the Ab uh, an, a covenant that God made with Abraham, and the covenant a covenant with God that God made with Abraham was Abraham was getting ready to prepare. A covenant means that the the uh, Old Testament worshipper and covenant maker would make a sacrifice, and they would lay part of the animal here and part of the sacrifice here, a fire, and they would walk through it. Abraham fell asleep in the middle of this. And God still honored this uh, because of Abraham's faith. And God walks through the middle of this covenant, of this uh, preparation, and, honor, and, and fulfills uh, a, a promise to Abraham. So, regardless of Abraham. So, God is faithful. Uh, and he wants us to be faithful in our covenants, in our agreements, in our vows with, our, with husband and wives, with men and women. And so, uh, unconditionally. Because that's how God was with Abraham. It was very unconditional. And God wants us, that to be, wants us to be that way with one another. And so, what is he saying? He says, don't divorce your wife. Now, for those of you that are listening and maybe you've gone through a divorce, this is not a judgment thing, all right? Um, God gets it. God understands it. Um, that, that mistakes are made. Uh, and, and God loves you. And he wants to bless you. And he wants his best for you, all right? So this is no judgment upon anyone that's had a divorce. But for those that are maybe struggling, or maybe even not even struggling, you're in a relationship, you're married, um, here's the word, is God says, remain faithful. Remain faithful to one another. These men of Israel and Judah were divorcing their wives. And God says, it's, it's you're doing harm. It's causing harm. Um, God says, uh, you're... You're, it's described as violence. It does violence not only to the spouse, but it does violence to the children because they no longer have the consistency and the harmony uh, and the protection in the home that they need. And, and they miss out on, on the, the, the protection and the provision that a man provides and the nurture and the love and the care that the woman provides. The children miss out on that. And so God hates divorce because of that. It just totally disrupts what God wants to do in our lives. Not that God can't help us recover from that, and, and, and we're not being judged about that, but God wants his best for you. And so his best for you is to remain faithful and loyal to one another. And I know for me this just speaks volumes. You know, remain loyal, remain faithful to the wife of your youth. Michelle and I have been together since the fall of 1971 so that's 48 years we've been together we'll have been married 46 years this coming December and 
you know, just like anybody else, we age, we're not perfect, we get on each other's nerves, we do things that aren't great, but we remain faithful to one another, we remain loyal to one another, we remain, we, we remain willing to walk through covenant with one another, even if the other one isn't as faithful or doesn't always do the things they should do. And we do this because we honor God, we want His blessing, and we do want to honor our mate, because we said vows to them so many years ago. And so, if you're having a little rigid, little tough time going in the marriage, remain faithful, remain loyal. Pray and ask God. Uh, I pray this every single day in my journal. On the back, I've got a prayer request list here. And I pray every single day, Lord, put a hedge of protection around Michelle. I pray for her health. I pray for her healing. Um, I pray that God would provide for her. And then I pray, God, put a hedge of protection around our marriage. And I do that because I want to get, guard my heart because I said vows to her so many years ago. And yes, those vows mean something. They mean something. And so that's God's word for us today is covenant, remain faithful, remain loyal, trust God, and watch him bless you. All right? Watch him bring, ble bring blessing. So guard your heart. Stay loyal and faithful to one another and put your trust and hope in the Lord God. All right, that's my word today. Have a great day and a great rest of the week and we'll see you next week.